So right now we have the lovely pleasure of having Luis Baez with us today. How are you, Luis? I am excellent. How are you, Gabby? I am good. I'm good and so happy to have you on here. I love the background, the support of a lot of things. And so I'm excited yeah. to learn more about you. So why don't you just go ahead and tell us about what it is that you do? Because I just learned, you know, it's kind of an overall brand, not necessarily exact company. <laughs> so my name is Luis Baez and I am the founder of the Chief Inspiration Officer at LuisBaez.com. And in a nutshell, I am a sales enablement specialist. Mm. And so I sit at that intersection of operations, marketing and sales and how all things should be align processes tools and 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 content all align in the effort of enabling more sales mm -hmm. um, and that also includes coaching and training as well so i'm just here to, to to untangle the things that are going on in the business and make sure the things that get very streamlined wonderful and what was that term again that you that label that you right. have yourself what was that again right right we're gonna we're gonna shake things up in the industry uh, yeah. <laughs> sales enablement specialist so is that something yeah. that's an actual like overall label? Is that what you came up with? How did that come about? Yeah. So I have uh, over 14 years of corporate experience. I have, was recruited to do sales for companies like LinkedIn, Google, Uber, and Tesla. Mm -hmm. And at these bigger companies, these massive sales organizations, there are uh, you know people who are dedicated to filling in that gap between sales and marketing, as well as skill development. Mm -hmm. And they step in, they look at processes, they look at content, they go, okay, marketing is working on this. Uh, and, and sales is over here trying to sell that. So right. how do we take all this marketing, translate it for customers, mm -hmm. put it in the salespeople's hands in useful ways mm -hmm. to spark more conversations mm -hmm. and move deals along. And so that is in a nutshell what I do. It's beyond sort of just coaching and training traditionally. I take a holistic view at the sale. Mm -hmm. And it kind of reminds me like what people sometimes might find boring the business world is like supply chain. It almost seems like you're kind of good <laughs> at having like streamlined and having all the pieces come together efficiently. Yeah. So I actually stumbled into the business while working full time in the corporate world. And I started working with consultants and coaches on the side who were trying to figure out like how to operationalize their smaller businesses. And so borrowing all that Silicon Valley secret sauce, mm -hmm. I now am dedicated to uh, working with business owners that are female identified, BIPOC, LGBTQIA, who are otherwise underrepresented or underserved mm -hmm. or underfunded in online business spaces. And I teach them those bigger strategies. I implement those systems and I teach them and train them up on their sales processes to make sure that everyone's out here getting what they deserve for their mm -hmm. expertise. I love that. I love that. All the snaps and claps for that one. Yes, thank you. And of course. <laughs> so would you say that's kind of, obviously there's a lot of like consultants and coaching coaches and everything out there. Would you say that's kind of what separates you is giving everyone the opportunity and showing everyone the knowledge and the platforms that some may not have access to? Precisely. Yeah, I hone in on what we call micro businesses. So they're not startups, they're not these big corporations. Mm -hmm. They are people, you know, folks, attorneys, coaches, individualized uh, sort of practices that are out here making big waves mm -hmm. and trying to operationalize their expertise. Um, and I hone in on those micro businesses and give them those big player tools. Mm -hmm. And so I'd love to hear a little bit about why you got into kind of like you said, the micro businesses and the why, that exact sections, that sector. Yeah. So I entered the space by accident. I was working full time at a big company and, you know, I was working and I felt like a, a cog in a very big machine. Mm -hmm. uh, there was, you know, opportunity for me to continue making more money based on performance. But as far as my influence and the capacity of the things that I was doing was all the way limited. So I started getting my sort of intellectual rocks off outside of work. I started consulting on the side. Mm -hmm. First things first, people were coming to me asking for advice on how to optimize their LinkedIn profiles. They heard that I've been recruited to work at all these companies. They wanted to figure that out. Mm -hmm. And when I did that enough times, then people started tapping my shoulder and saying, Luis, how do you manage a business while working full time? Like, how do you bring this all together? How do you manage it? Who do you hire? Like what's going on in the background? Mm -hmm. And as I started stepping into this space, going to conferences, going to industry events, go, joining online groups and things like that, trying to wrap my head around, like, mm -hmm. what is the opportunity? Trying to get in where I fit in. Right. But there were very few people that had my background or my lived experiences. Mm -hmm. I'm an out gay man from the South Bronx. I'm Puerto Rican. And I don't really see it. Yeah, huepa, you know? Yeah, huepa, I mean? you know. <laughs> huepa, all day, all day. You know, we're out here, right? Mm -hmm. We are out yes. here. But yes. when we go to these business events and these mm -hmm. industry, you know, sort of functions, 
we're not on stage and you know we're not headlining we're not keynoting and you know we know now that the cat's out the bag that's that's in part by design yes and so yes. the way that we shake things up is we have to in in this instance i decided to take up space become visible and started putting it out there like i exist mm -hmm. and i exist and i'm here for the people that aren't being served come work with me I love that. And it's, it's so important to, like you said, it's just, it's kind of set up that way. And it's like, we now have to create our own space rather than trying to force ourselves into mm -hmm. what's already been there and been creative and almost polluted in a way it's yeah. creating our own space. 100 percent. I think of it as like, almost like creating our own micro economy, right? Like yes. I want to yes. roll with really dope entrepreneurs and I want to invest in their business mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. because throughout the, like the, the life cycle of my business, mm -hmm. I'm going to need copywriters, designers, accountants, social media managers, right. et cetera. And, you know, I want to work with people of a certain caliber mm -hmm. and how do we do that? How do we attract that? I got to show up as well. Mm -hmm. And I got to make sure that I bring people along with me on the ride. Mm -hmm. And how like, important do you think it is for like you said these businesses that you work with to have some like a coach and consultant to work with that looks like them that has their shared experiences rather than someone who who doesn't know what it's like to go through like you said as a person of color or lgbtq plus like what does that mean to them yeah i think oftentimes i hear stories of people who don't attempt things simply because they never saw someone like them doing it 100%. or they didn't think it was possible simply mm -hmm. because they didn't see themselves in that space or they didn't see themselves contributing in that sort of capacity right mm -hmm. um and i think what happens oftentimes i connect with people they hear my story right where i come from you know coming up in poverty in the south bronx and then mm -hmm. stomping up and down silicon valley all these companies that's not a story that you hear every day. Mm -hmm. And so I felt a real responsibility to just share that, not to be full of myself, mm -hmm. but because as I was coming up, I didn't have anyone to turn to. I didn't have a mentor who could warn me about what I was getting myself into, who could help me navigate those really difficult situations and conversations, mm -hmm. right? And even as I stepped into business, I still, you know, didn't, at first, now there are more and more of us that are gaining visibility mm -hmm. and, and, and there's more respect on our names and our checks, right? But when I was first starting out in the online business world five years ago, it wasn't so much the case. And so mm -hmm. um, I followed someone else's path who, you know, ultimately that path wasn't for me. I followed their steps, their coaching, their teachings, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, and then I made it my own. And in making it my own, I then started to encourage other people to do the same. And that is where, you know, I really found sort of the, the inspiration to continue moving down this path. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's amazing. I love it. Like, and all day, every day. <laughs> all day, every day. <laughs> and how do you think it's been as far as going along the journey? I, I think the big thing I, I've lived by myself to live with myself too, as far as like, when you can tell that story, you say you don't like to brag and everything, but I think when mm -hmm. you can tell that story and everything and kind of give someone else a piece of their blueprint, cause like you said, you had no yes. one ahead of you who've done, who's done this. And now yeah. rather than having someone else go through the struggle by sharing your story, no, you're giving other people the keys and the steps that they didn't have and you didn't have, and now they do get to have. Right. And I'm someone who I really try to keep it all the way real in the way that I move, right? Mm -hmm. Like I, I try to show up for conversations all yes. the way raw, all the way honest and all the way real because this path is, is difficult, right? It's not impossible, right? It is yes. not impossible. Anything you want for yourself is within that reach, you know, but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. You have to want it and mm -hmm. you can't go alone. I think that is the biggest thing, particularly when it comes to entrepreneurship and leadership and things like that. Like, mm -hmm especially in the context of America and like self-determinism and like picking yourself up by the bootstraps or whatever. And especially when it comes to entrepreneurship, we over hype and over admire like that one person who was the visionary, the do it all, et cetera. Yeah. And I don't think that's realistic, right? I think it takes an entire squad of people to make something manifest. 100%. And it takes a holistic approach to help one person, you know, really fulfill what they're trying to do as a visionary. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think that that's, that's what I really want to, to also, you know, be out here is like telling the story of like, it is messy. It is not linear. Yeah. It is not like this fairy tale of like, oh, I'm going to show up and people are going to flood me with mm -hmm. capital and funding. No, but is it impossible? Right. <laughs> it's also not impossible yeah, it's with the right on. people in your corner. And that's what I was going to ask going off that exact statement. What is your advice for maybe some of our listeners of how to find that squad, how to find the right people to keep in your corner? Yeah, I think that it's so important. I try to think of 
relative to like my business networking. First of all, I separate personal and business. I know that's like the oldest tale, but I mm -hmm. really truly believe when I first got started, I started socializing my ideas with family members and friends and things like that. I got a lot of encouragement, a lot of we're proud of you, a lot of pats on the back, but not enough feedback, yeah. actionable feedback on how to improve myself or the work that I was doing. Mm -hmm. And so I took a different approach. I said, okay, love my people, but I need to be surrounded with other business people. Yeah. I need to be surrounded with other or ambitious people who are yeah. out there. Yes, yes. In it, out here to get it mm -hmm. and willing, willing to like be focused on what they're doing, but not, you know, hold their cards so close to the chest that mm -hmm. they don't, they don't pass that sage advice along. So yeah. my approach as I started getting into like Facebook groups and online programs and things like this, I really set out to build like my board of directors, mm -hmm. right? Or my like C-level suite. So I've got one person in my corner. She's my chief marketing officer. She's got years of branding experience, et cetera. She runs her own business, right? But she's my chief marketing officer. I'm her chief revenue officer on the sales side. Okay. And we bolster each other's businesses that way. It's right. Important. Chief financial officer. I got a homie who worked on Wall Street for years. He can help me crunch numbers that I don't understand. He can help me project things that aren't very clear to me when I'm in the weeds with things. Right. Yeah. He can get my head right when I'm over or under projecting. Right. Mm -hmm. I can't do it alone. Am I capable? Like, am I smart? Am I hardworking? Yeah. But mm -hmm. I think I held those cards so close to the chest for so long. You know, because it, we you know, there's this again that hype of like the entrepreneur is a superhuman. Mm -hmm. No, we're not. And so I have a squad, they're very carefully selected and they're mm -hmm. selected from groups that I belong to of other people doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And I think that's important too, how you ended it as well, as far as like matching who you are too and the values as well as picking that. It's like they said, personal and business is separated, but it also is integrated a little bit too. They have to match also those personal values. Yes, absolutely. And so what would you say is the vision for your business and who you are and what are your plans to make it a reality? Yeah, you know, I, I have this ambition of building a learning and development company. Mm -hmm. Like I'm right now, yes, I'm a consultant. I'm running a micro business. Mm -hmm. My goal is to create this really dope, reputable, groundbreaking foundation or institution that people join, apply to, et cetera, mm -hmm. where they come and they are all the way embraced for who they are their ideas are all the way celebrated all the way fleshed out they are funded mentored etc all the way to launch and also to funding right like that i think that you know this is like a hybrid learning and development company and incubator if you will mm -hmm. is my vision um, you know, I, I grew up in the Bronx and one of the things that I really struggled with is that, you know, we lived in a borough that was very underserved, right? We had to leave the Bronx to get anything. You know, we wanted like, you know, good customer service. You wanted access to certain retail kind of locations or even like service, you know, certain amenities and certain things like that. You know, I came up in the 80s and 90s no one was investing in the mm -hmm. books you had to step out yeah. you know i want to live in a future where the businesses and the places that i call home are thriving yes. they're well supported they have all the sort of mentoring and education and training and things that they need and funding mm -hmm. right that is my vision you know there's there's this big big pie we keep giving it to the sky and to the big tech giants Leaving us with crumbs yeah Ooh, no I want we get slices here we get slices right. big slices right. <laughs> right right nice and thick and and all you know, the frosting and everything see, yes <laughs> <laughs> absolutely so for any of our listeners who are interested in having getting more information about you or just getting in contact with you what are the best ways to do so and the best places to go yeah, I think the best way to keep in touch with me, you know, social media full of puppy pictures and things like that. The <laughs> best way to keep in touch with me is to head on over to textluis.com. Mm -hmm. And that is the best way to keep up with what I've got going down. And let me know that you listen to this show. Let me know that you heard this conversation between Gabby and I, and I will absolutely hook you up with some sales scripts to help you along. Wonderful. We all heard it here. Make sure you mention that when you reach out on that website. So Luis Baez, thank you so much for spending this time with us and sharing all that thank and you. giving more piece of the pie. We're getting more pie coming yes. up soon. Yeah, I'll hear. I want all of it, all the fruit, all the crumble, everything. Give Frosting, it all of it. <laughs> all of it. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you, my friend.